you would turn your attention to the 22nd chapter of the gospel according to St. Luke, reading from the New uh, Living Translation of the Scriptures. There you'll find these words. Then accompanied by the disciples, Jesus left the upstairs room and went as usual to the Mount of Olives. And there he told them, pray that you will not give in to temptation. And he walked away about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, Father, if you're willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. And then an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. This is Handle the Challenge, part three. Handle the Challenge, part three. Here's what we notice in terms of of handling challenge and adversity in life that when faced with a challenge, you can fight. You can fight. That is to use your strength to resist and to conquer the challenge. Or you can secondly flee. You can flee. That is to use your feet to escape the situation or the challenge. Because sometimes you're not strong enough to fight, so you have to flee. But today we will take a look at the third strategy, which is to flow. And that is where you use your will to yield to the challenge. Sometimes just yielding, surrendering by saying, God, I surrender not my will, but your will be done. Jesus was in a very precarious situation in the garden of Gethsemane, facing facing what he knew by the spirit, but his flesh was recoiling from it because the flesh recalls from death and he knew that the time of his death was imminent. So now Jesus is saying, God, remove this bitter cup from me. I don't don't want to suffer. Nobody in their right mind likes pain. I said in their right mind, (laughs) likes pain and suffering and discomfort. Jesus didn't like being in an uncomfortable situation and having to deal with the bitter cup of suffering. Sometimes that bitter cup of suffering is a loved one being snatched away from you. The death of a mother, a father, a husband, a wife, a son, or daughter. Sometimes that bitter cup that you might deal with is a business failure. Sometimes it's financial challenge. Sometimes it's a physical attack on your own health of your own body. Uh, Everybody's bitter cup is something different. Sometimes it's a public uh, image issue. Sometimes it's taxes that you owe. You know what your bitter cup. Sometimes it is a strained relationship with a friend. You might know what your bitter cup is. And as Jesus, he didn't want to have to deal with this because it was so painfully uncomfortable. And so Jesus said, Father, take this cup away from me. If I don't have to do this, if there's another way that this can be done, please, let's take that route. But he says, nevertheless, I want to yield to you. I want to flow with what you've already designed. Jesus was born to die. To be able to take away the sins of the world. He was that lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world to die to take away the sins of the world. And so there are certain things that you cannot change that you have to yield to if you really want it to flow into your life. Here's what flow means. Flow is the mental state in which a person performing an activity is fully immersed in the feeling of energized focus or full involvement or the enjoyment in the process of an activity. When you're in flow, you have energized focus. You have full involvement. You have enjoyment in the process of an activity. And it can happen in any arena of life. A musician can get into flow when they're on the instrument. A singer can get in a flow when they're in the midst of a song. A basketball player can get in the flow when they feel like they're hot, that they're in the zone. A a football player, a soccer player, a tennis player, there are just some days that you're just in that zone where you can just, I mean, when the ball leaves your hand, you can just close your eyes because you know it's all nets. Or you know this one is in. When a baseball player hits it, you can just tell by the sound and the feel of how that ball makes contact with the bat. That it, that, that's it. That's a home run there. You can take your time. You can walk the bases. Uh, you, you can just feel that when you're in your flow. I mean, there's sometimes uh, when, when uh, folks have an anointing to cook 
And you can just tell, you, you can just know that this is going to make somebody slap their mama. You just know, you, you just know, you know, I, I, I did myself today. You, you know when you're in the flow, when, when everything is just falling out right, it's just turning out right because you're in that, in that zone. See, this is exactly what the anointing does to you. The anointing of God on you puts you in the flow to where you actually relax. And, and listen, here's the deal. In order to flow, you have to let go. In order to flow, you have to let go. In order to flow, you have to let go. You have to give up in order to go up. It's impossible to be promoted if you are irreplaceable on your job. That's why you need to always train somebody to be able to do what you do. Don't be insecure that somebody's going to take your job. Listen. Secure people are willing to teach other folks how to do what they do Because if you can be replaced you can always if you teach somebody else to replace you You now put yourself in a position to be promoted Because if I can't find a replacement for you and you work for me I'm afraid to replace you because now who is it that's gonna feel your job if nobody else knows how to do it But you but I can promote you if you've had enough leadership in you to teach what you know to somebody else so if you are not replaceable, you are not promotable. You just think about that. If you are not replaceable, you are not promotable. And listen, if you promote yourself out of a position, you'll always have a position. Trust me on that. If you ever teach somebody what you know and make yourself valuable to that organization by training other people, you'll always have a position somewhere. Your value will increase the more that you make yourself unnecessary on the level where you are. You'll be promoted. So Jesus is just saying, listen, get into the flow of God. Get into the flow, but let go. You've got to let go of your will. You've got to let go of how you think. You've got to let go of your emotions. You've got to let go of how you feel. You've got to trust God. Let go and let God. That's what puts you into flow. So when the anointing is on you, the anointing relaxes you so that you perform at your maximum peak and you're focused and you're in the zone and that thing is flowing out. When a person sings with the anointing, the anointing of being upon you makes it easy because you're not struggling whenever you're in a flow. When you're in a flow, you, your thoughts flow, words flow. The, the work that comes out of your hand, it just flows. What, the music that you make, it flows. Whatever you do in sports, it just flows because you're relaxed. The anointing relaxes you so that you perform at your peak performance. You can never do any better than what you do under the anointing. The anointing maximizes you because it puts you in the divine flow of God. God's spirit is a current. Uh, current means running. It means flowing. It is like the river of God. It's not a lake. It is not stagnant. It's a flowing thing. When you step into the river of God, it changes whatever touches it. So you come alive. And so when you step into that living flow of God, it makes something come alive in you. And it makes whatever you do easy just to get in the flow. So you have to, you have to be able to get in the flow. Tell somebody next to you, get in the flow, get in the flow, get in the flow. Get in the flow. I just, I just love it. Here's what I, I use flow as an acronym. It's just follow, lead, or wait and do what you know to do in the meantime. You follow or you lead or wait and do what you know to do in the meantime. Sometimes you don't know what the next step is, but do what you know to do in the meantime. Do what you know to do in the meantime. Follow, lead, or wait and do what you know to do in the meantime. Because if you're not willing to follow, you're not qualified to lead. Follow, lead, or wait and do what you know to do in the meantime. Just stay faithful on the level where you are. Stay faithful. Flow. Just flow. Flow. Just flow. But here's, here's something I want you to realize. If you're going to flow to the maximum ability of whatever God gives to you, you have to have a partner. You have to have a partner to flow with in life. It doesn't mean that everybody has to be married, but you have to have a partner. Jesus wasn't married, but he had partners. You have to have partners to be able to flow with you. That maximizes you. Jesus always sent the disciples out by twos. Peter and John, Paul and Silas, Paul and Barnabas. You know why? Because you don't have the capacity to multiply by yourself. You know why you need a par partner? 
Because you need somebody to encourage you on those days when you feel like quitting. You need somebody in your ear to say, baby, come on, you can do this. Baby, go on back in there. I know what they said about you, and I know you don't want to deal with it, and I know they don't appreciate you the way that they should appreciate you, but baby, you steal my boo. <laughs> you need somebody to just tell you, you know what? These people, they, they're not treating you right, but you my whole world. You my everything. They need somebody to just speak in, in, in your life. You need somebody that, that believes in you. You need somebody that helps you in your flow. You got to have people that, that ride with you. You know, even folks that aren't married, they got a friend. They got, they, got a, they got a partner. They got somebody who is there in their corner. Many years ago when, uh, you know, I, I, I first started out in ministry as a young teenager, and I'd go in and I'd go to various places and pray for the sick, I, I would, my mother would go right with me. And I'd have my mother standing outside of the door pleading the blood of Jesus while I was in there battling spirits and taking authority in the name of Jesus. You got to have somebody else that's covering you. Somebody, no matter how big and powerful and strong that you think that you are, you got to have somebody who's a watchman on the wall that is pleading the blood. Anybody understand what I'm saying? You got to have somebody that's saying, I know my child feel like they're going out there and taking over the world, but Lord, protect them. Protect them from pride taking over their lives, making them too big for their britches. Jesus, protect my child as they get on planes and buses and trains and driving in automobiles and going from place to place. Jesus, while my child is driving Uber out there and lift Jesus. Jesus, protect my child. Protect my child. Lord, while they're playing ball, I, Lord, I pray that you protect them. Keep them from sexual harassment on their job. I plead the blood. I mean, you got to have somebody that is in your corner that's pleading the blood, that's praying for you, that's believing God, that the destiny that God has marked out for my child, for my friend, for my brother, for my sister. You got to have somebody in your corner that is your ride or die partner. When I grew up riding motorcycles, I'd be, sometimes I'd have somebody on the back and you need somebody that knows how when you're in a lean of a curb, they know how to lean with you. Because if they're leaning the wrong way and you're going this way and you're in a curb, they can make both of you nearly kill yourself. You got to have somebody that knows how to lean with you. And what I'm saying to somebody to lean with you, I mean when you go through lean times and lean years, they're not asking you for pricely top of the dollar kind of stuff bothering you about going on an expensive vacation and buying them some Gucci and Louis Vuitton. They understand, baby, if you can get me the generic band, I'm all right. If I, I'm, I'm with you in this even when we have to eat and carry a greasy bag with us on the trip and we can't afford to stop anywhere. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You got to have somebody that's going to be with you in your corner that knows how to ride with you in the lean year. You got to have somebody that'll stand with you when you're at the bus stop. Everybody wants to ride with you when you're in the limo. Everybody wants to ride with you when you got the exotic car. But will they walk with you? Will they wait with you? You got to have somebody that knows how to lead. That puts you in your flow. That puts you in your flow. That puts you in a flow. You got to thank God for your road dog that knows how to ride with you with all of the curvaceous slopes that life has to offer. Somebody that will go with you with the ups and the downs. And when you got a flat time, when you broke down, and when you got to park on a hill, cause you know that you got to coast down and pop the clutch in order to get the car. Oh, you have always had something where you could depend on it all the time. And when you have to carry around oil like you do gas, and you got several quarts in the trunk. Anybody know those days where you, your car is leaking oil and smoking, but it gets you from point A to point B? You gotta have somebody that's not embarrassed to walk with you when you got to put oil in almost like you put gas in, and they can still celebrate you and cheer you on and say, come on, baby, come on, baby, come on, baby, we're gonna do this thing. We doing it, we doing it. You got to be able to walk like a millionaire when you don't have 15 cents in the bank. You don't let your circumstances define who you are. You got to do what you got to do until you can do what you want to do. Tell somebody, say, get in the flow, get in the flow, get in the, get in the flow. I'm just here to tell you, you know why? 
Because money attracts the person that you want, but your struggle attracts the person that you need. You don't always know who you need, but your struggle will bring somebody and they will come in and deal with your drama. They'll deal with your issues. They'll be able to calm the beast in you. you. Your struggle will draw the person that you need. Your money will attract the person that you want. But if they come for your money, they'll leave you when your money gets funny. And that's why you need the person that your struggle brings to you. If somebody falls in love with you while you're in a struggle, that's your road dog. They'll lean with you. They'll rock with you. They'll ride with you. Because you got somebody that was drawn to the struggle because they had an anointing to be able to see greatness in you even when you were in a low place. Great people start out in low places. You know what every master is called? An amateur. In the beginning, they're an amateur. Before you're a master, before you're an expert, you are a beginner. You're, you're simply a starter. You are an amateur. Before you ever come to that place, and you got to have somebody that encourages you, encourages you along the journey. That's what you're called to be until you can get into your flow. You always struggle to get in your flow. That's what a plane does. It struggles to get off the, the ground. It burns the majority of its fuel trying to get off of the ground. But once it finds that pocket of air, once it finds the jet stream, now it's just moving in a flow. There have been times that I've been on so many flights that have gone out of the way. It wasn't the straightest way, but they were making their way to where the jet stream was. Because if you could get in the flow of the jet stream, it, you can get to where you're going without having to burn so much fuel. And that's why when you get in the flow, you can get where you're going faster and easier when you get in the flow. But you struggle until you get in the flow. You got to struggle till you get in the flow. I cannot tell you how many times I started out praying. I start off in the flesh, but I wind up in the spirit. Oh my God, I start off and it's like a powdered donut. I don't even feel anything. And then the other days I walk in and before my knees can hit the ground good, I'm in the spirit. I feel the Holy Ghost flowing. Words are just flowing out of me, just pouring out of my spirit. But I wish it were like that every day, but it's not. I have to pray when I feel the spirit and I have to pray when I don't feel it. I have to struggle until I can get in my flow. I have to struggle until I can get in my flow because you have to flap your wings and that's the struggling trying to get up into your flow and once you hit that pocket of air you set your wings and let it carry you you set your wings set your wing that's when you know that you have found your flow that's when you know that you found your flow but flowing requires yielding yielding saying I surrender saying not my way but your way your will be done Jesus had to find that way he had to find God's purposes in his life and he had to yield to God's way he had to yield to God's will but not to temptation Jesus said pray that you enter not into temptation he knew that there was always going to be something to tempt you away from God's best for your life I'm, I'm just telling you whenever God has a big promise to you whenever God has a great destiny for you the devil will try to get you to compromise on something that is good but it is not best and that becomes a temptation to say, man, you know you're struggling. Gary, you know you're struggling. You better go and accept that. But good is the enemy of best. If you know that this is not that, I mean, if this is not the one that God has designed for you, when you settle, you lose. When you settle, you lose. So the devil will tempt you. Not every temptation is evil at the onlook or the outlook. The temptation is something that lures you out of God's will. And whatever is out of God's will is bad for you. So there are times that he's given a dream in your heart. And when you accept something that is not the dream, you compromise and you lose. Because you'll be tempted with something because the devil will always bring the counterfeit before the real shows up. And you have to wonder, is this the counterfeit or is this the, the real? Because the real will put you in your flow. The counterfeit 
will cause you to compromise and it'll, you'll only be satisfied for a season. But if we have to yield, yield to God and not to temptation. And this is why Jesus says, pray that you enter not into temptation. Pray that you enter not into temptation. Pray that you enter not into temptation. I've seen so many people get into the temptation of falling for the wrong person because they got desperate. And they said, you know what, I'm getting old. Shoot, I mean, I know he ain't everything I want and everything, but shoot. I mean, he is a man. He still put his pants on one leg at a time. And yet... And they start compromising because they got impatient. And they settle for the enemy of best. That they're always, the devil will always tempt you to accept something that is less than God's purpose for your life. He just wants to lure you out of God's will to mess you up. If you're out of the will of God, you lose your peace. You lose your peace when you're out of God's will. So that's why he says, yield not to temptation. And you always think that temptation is something sexual. You always think that temptation is something that looks evil. Sometimes it looks good. It looks good. Eve looked at the fruit, the fruit looked good. It looks good, temptation always looks good. Nobody is attempted to overeat broccoli and asparagus. It's only the fried chicken and the rib tips. The fried pork chops, smothered in gravy. The stuff that tempts us always looks good. He will never tempt you with something that doesn't look good to you. If it doesn't feel good, he won't tempt you with it. That's the danger of temptation. Temptation always has good mixed in, but it's temporary. And once you bite into it, it's got cyanide in it. And this is why Jesus said, pray that you enter not into temptation. It was Horatio uh, Richmond Palmer who, who in 1868 penned these words of the song, yield not to temptation. That's why, don't ever throw the old hymns away just because you get some new tunes. Don't ever throw them away. I want you to see this and just, just, just meditate on this word. Yield not to temptation for yielding is sin. Each victory will help you some others to win. Fight valiantly onward, dark passions subdue. Go to church. Come on, just ask. Ask the Savior to heal you, comfort, but strengthen and keep you. He is really, he is willing to aid you. He will, he will carry you. Oh, just ask. Savior to in 1868 before they had television and the internet and they still dealt with temptation because fine wasn't born yesterday I mean it might have been covered up but some women they knew they knew they knew they knew that temptation was just as real back then as it is now 
And people sneak in sophisticated places now, but back in the country, they, they, they had a, a roll in the hay. Oh, they, oh, they had their little places. They, they, they knew what, everybody, even in the country, they, they had their little secret places that they could, if they had to go out in the cornfield. Oh, they, they had that place. They might not have had a, a station wagon where they could climb in the back seat. But they had a wagon. They had that place, trust me. And that's why Horatio Palmer back in 1868 was able to write these words, yield not to temptation for yielding is sin. That's why Jesus says, pray that you enter not into temptation. And let me just say this to you, that when you surrender your will to God, he will render his strength to you. When you surrender your will to God, he will render his strength to you. Remember when Jesus said, nevertheless, thy will be done. The Bible says, then God dispatched his angels and strengthened him. He didn't get God's strength from the angels until he yielded his will. So when you surrender your will to God, he will render his strength to you. When you say, God, I give up, God will strengthen you. At the moment that you said, Lord, I can't do this another week, not another day, God, Jesus, I'm about to lose my mind. I can't, I can't take this anymore. Jesus, I, I can't keep living. When you surrender your will to God, God will render his strength to you. And I want you to just notice what the word of the Lord says in Luke chapter 21 and verse 26. It talks about men's hearts failing them for fear and the expectation of those things that are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. You see, this is talking about in the last days, this is men's hearts will start failing them for fear, for fear, for fear. Thank you for watching Power for Living with Bishop Dale C. Bronner. We pray that this message has encouraged, equipped, and empowered you to live a more victorious life. Join us next time for Power for Living with Dale C. Bronner, where revelation is power, power for living.